Hello everybody and welcome to the main save now that FM23 is fully released. We are diving in with a long term challenge save. Now I've not done this save before and it's making me very excited slash nervous because I know the game is slightly difficult this year. Well not difficult but the tactics within the match engine mean that if you get it wrong it could go seriously wrong and if you get it right it can do pretty well. So we're diving in. For the FM23 Youth Academy Challenge. And that is what we're on at the moment on the sports interactive um, forums for Football Manager, right? There's loads of adverts for FM23 because it's come out. The game's out now. But Darren1983 seems to be the guy who is running this series on the FM23 forums, right? And I think it's been an ongoing thing. There was one last year. There was one the year before. I've done a bit of research. And I'm very excited by this. So... Let's quickly go through the rules and then we'll jump into the game and understand what's going to happen. So, into the forums then. The aim of this is to win your chosen country's top division and the Champions League of that continent with a previously unplayable club using only your academy as a way of acquiring new players. No transfers of any kind, no buying back former players, even on freeze, and no loans can ever be part of a deal to sell your player. So, no transfers whatsoever. Now, transfers are great fun. So, this isn't going to be the only save on the channel. Um, I'm going to be doing one with Wrexham after the Newcastle save finishes. If you've been watching the beta save with Newcastle, that will continue for a little bit longer. Uh, and then we're going to move over to Wrexham where we're going to be spending loads of Ryan Reynolds money. That will be across YouTube, Twitch and off camera for me as well. Um, so, that's going to be like a, a save that I play in my spare time. This one will be the main YouTube save with the Youth Academy Challenge. It will probably go from the beginning of the game cycle to the end of the game cycle. But uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So, we know the aim and we know the rules around transfers. Available country. So, previously, any country in Europe was eligible as long as you can get a previously unplayable side promoted from holidaying. For the last couple of years, we're able to extend it to the rest of the world as long as the team meets the criteria of being previously unplayable. So, we know that you have to have an unplayable team. Now, unplayable means a team that starts in a lower regional or non-loadable league that after you holiday have got promoted to the leagues that you can play in. So we're looking at the Vanarama National South, um, Vanarama National North, Serie C in Italy, uh, League, the National Amateur League, I think it's called in France, um, the Bundesliga 3, or maybe even the regional German, German leagues. I have loaded all these up. Uh, Spain, Group B, 2 or something. It's Yeah, there's some bonkers leagues in there, and you are starting right at the bottom. Now, custom leagues will be allowed, but we aren't using a custom database, so that's fine. So we should be fine to do this. There's lots of speculation about what impacts youth intake and what uh, you as a player can do in order to get the best intake you can. And below is information we have thanks to Seb. So Seb, I think, works for SI. If not, he's really in with them. And this is what they say can help you get the best intake. So youth recruitment, the club's recruiting of junior players from home and foreign origin. So you want to have the highest youth recruitment we possibly can. Youth facilities, the training facilities available for juniors only. This does not apply to visible players already at the club. All visible currently at the club use training facilities regardless of age. So what this means is that your training facilities for youth are affecting the players coming through your youth intake. It's basically your youngsters from under 7s to under 16s or under 15s and they are using these facilities just for them. So starting at a really, really rubbish club, you're not going to have very good youth facilities and probably not going to have very good youth recruitment either. Junior coaching is the quality and quantity of junior coaches at the club, so the more you can improve that, the better the coaching is for your youngsters. Your nation youth rating, which is the potential maximum quality and quantity of juniors produced in that nation. Hence why we're going to be going to Europe. We will have Brazil and Argentina as viewable only, just so that we can see what sort of players they're producing as well. But we will be somewhere in Europe, and it's most likely going to be France, England, Germany, Italy or Spain, generally. But we'll have a look at that when we load up the game. So... Game importance, how important football is considered to be in that nation. Again, I think that comes with picking Europe and picking those leagues. It will genuinely make the game a bit more interesting with the new gens and the, the regens, new gens, having a place, place it that are produced in our club, I think will be slightly better. So, uh, so producing new gens, the club will be 
with the best youth recruitment will generally pick up the best junior talent from that nation first the scale of the talent being determined by the nation youth rating and game importance the lower the youth recruitment the further down the pecking order a club will find itself two clubs with identical youth recruitment will be sorted by club reputation being lowered down this pecking order does not mean quality nugens cannot be produced it simply lowers the chance so again starting right from the bottom we're going to have no coaching badges and we're playing as a team that's just going to be playable after holidaying for one season this is why it's going to be a tough challenge Youth facilities and junior coaching then simulate and determine how the junior progresses in the club's junior system until a new gen is produced and appears in the game. It is at this point that the current ability, CA and potential ability, PA, of the new gens are decided. The above factors all contribute to CA and PA equally. And then you get onto the staff, so your head of youth development. The club's head of youth development is responsible for bringing in new gens to the club. He will influence what type of players are selected and can partially or fully pass on his personality to some of those new gens. The type of player selected refers to a player's position and style. And for instance, the head of youth, youth development with a preferred 4-5-1 formation and technical coaching style will produce more technically styled midfielders than any other head of youth development. Now that is crucial because we need to go and get a good head of youth development and that's going to be a struggle early on in the game the head of youth development would also influence the rare freak or exceptional nugens that come through modifying their ability and style the role is filled by the head of youth development by default however if no one is employed whichever staff member is set to be responsible for the youth development will fill this role so that is generally what we need to know the youth intake preview we know about junior player poaching we know happens uh, and the reset dates is when new new gens are released so what we have done uh, is we have simulated a game and we've set up all of this as well so we've got do not add key staff and prevent use of the in-game editor um, and then we've right, additional setting in the advance due to us not being allowed to buy players adding extra players just adds to the realism of your game so we have added in a hell of a lot of players we've got something like sixty-five thousand players i think in our database which is very very good so steps to get started if you want to play along with this you can follow this i'll put this link in the description below uh, if you want to get involved as well so add yourself as an unemployed manager call him holiday man if you want go on holiday until the reset date of your nation or the day before if you're planning on reloading retire the manager add a new manager of your chosen nationality at the lowest possible reputation and qualifications choose the newly promoted club of your choice so rules when you start up this is where it gets a little bit important you're allowed to keep any player that starts under contract and you can extend their contract as often as you like so you don't have to go and sell any older players that have already at the club they are your players they have come through the club for for want of the challenge and you don't have to get rid of them any players that are on loan at the club can be used but their loans cannot be extended so if you've got someone on loan keep him but you're not allowed to renew it if your board sign players for you and you can't cancel these deals the player cannot be used they must be sold asap you should also post a screenshot in here where they've been signed so that we know that we've they've been given to you so that's just if you're going to be playing along on the forums rules of the challenge then as discussed no loans no transfers but you can sell and loan players out if you're sacked you got to start again no save game editors are allowed obviously uh no international management is part of the challenge which is fine and signing backroom staff is allowed good signing players on trial or signing gray players isn't allowed Rules for this thread then, player naming is allowed, so we might get some of you guys that are still on Patreon or co like frequent players in the comments might get a name. Uh, discussion on tactics is allowed, screenshots, join the challenge, all of that good stuff, and uh, we'll see how it goes, to be honest. So, lots of things that you can post in here, anything that you want to do, blah bloody blah blah Right, that is the rules, that is what we're doing, let's dive into the game. So, diving into the game, we have just retired our manager after we have holidayed to the 25th of June, as recommended for the date for England in the Youth Academy page on the SI forums. And we've had a little bit of a change of heart. So, I did do this holiday and I went in and I had Italy, France, Germany, England and Spain all as options. And there were so many clubs to pick from of like, that was too much choice. So, we've narrowed it down and we're going just for england for the first time in our youth challenge i wouldn't mind trying to make this an annual event if it does well on the channel but uh, yes we are going for england so going into england the only leagues we need to look at is the vanarama national league north and south so if you want to go and find out the best way to know who's been promoted season preview and the newly promoted teams will genuinely be at the bottom of the table so 
We have Geisley, who are there, 14th at the moment because no games have been played. 14th is Geisley AFC. Semi-professional, don't have their kits in the game yet, but I will go and get them. Um, I'll go and get all the lower league ones eventually. Facilities-wise, which is probably what we need to keep an eye on, they have a 4,000 capacity stadium with 500 seats. Poor stadium condition, um, an okay pitch condition, basic corporate facilities, adequate training facilities, adequate youth facilities, a youth level of three, uh, good academy coaching and basic youth recruitment. So not a lot going on. The youth level of three is very interesting according that they're only in the National League North. I'm assuming most will have naught or one. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So in the senior squad, they do have quite a few players, which is good. They have a squad, which is amazing to see. We're not going to be straight away going into the youth team, but there is no under 21s. That's interesting. Only an under 18s team of which there are no players there. So these are all the players we would have if we pick Geisley AFC, and that is your choice. You've got to let me know down in the description which club we want to start this Youth Academy save with, and I'll give it a couple of days, and then we'll dig straight into it, because I'm very excited to get this one going. So our first potential club is Geisley AFC, and if we go and have a look at the others, then FC United of Manchester. Okay, trying to really take on the Manchester clubs would be quite an interesting story with only homegrown Youth Academy players. But it is up to you. They have, in terms of facilities, they have uh, what a brand new stadium, 4,400-seater stadium. Uh, what have we got here? They've got good pitch condition, adequate corporate facilities, basic training, basic youth, a youth level of four, average academy coaching, and fairly basic youth recruitment. Looking at their squad, again, does look like a pretty full squad that they have. They have one player retiring in Chris Taylor, 36-year-old Chris Taylor there. Uh, they have an under 18s but no under 21s again. Paul, they have four players in their under 18s and he's 33 so I'm going to expect he's not going to be amazing. Obviously we can't sign or loan any players so we have to just use what we're given in this squad. So if FC United of Manchester is your choice, let me know down below. Next up is Hitchin Town, uh, a club I'm not too familiar with, but I do love the fact they have a purple away kit. Again, we'll get the proper kits in in the future. Facilities-wise, then, uh, poor stadium condition. It is a privately owned pitch. It's a uh, stadium, 4,554 capacity. Basic corporate, basic training, basic youth. Four is their youth level. Uh, adequate academy coaching and fairly basic youth recruitment. In terms of the squad, they do have a few squads here. One on the list, two players wanted. One with a bid on is Jack Morrell Taunton for a free transfer. Again, no under-21s, but an under-18 squad that has two young players in it. So... It's going to be pretty interesting to see how this works, but if Hitchin's your town, let me know below. Tamworth are another option. They have three kits, apparently, in the game, which is uh, interesting. First team to have that. So they have, in terms of facilities, a good pitch condition, average stadium condition, quite an old club. 1934 is when the stadium was built. The Lamb Ground, 4,065 capacity. Uh, what have we got here? Youth level four, basic youth facilities, below average training facilities, basic corporate facilities, fairly basic academy, and a basic youth recruitment. So that does look like something that would be a little bit of a more of a struggle, given that it's only fairly basic academy coaching and below average training facilities as well. Looking at the players, we could see straight away they did have an under-21s team, so that's probably a bit more beneficial. But uh, a good, healthy sort of squad size, I would say, for the senior squad. Under-21s only has one, which is Liam Dolman, who's actually 35, and uh, the under-18s has nobody. So Tamworth, this would be the players we'd have to use, just this lot here. And some of them are wanted, two players on the list as well, so it could be a tough start to life in the National League North for Tamworth. And lastly, in the northern section of the Vanarama National Leagues is a Bishop's Stortford or Stortford. Uh, again, three kits, which is interesting to see for this sort of level. In terms of facilities then, um, 1999 is when the stadium was built, 4,000 capacity. Uh, let's have a look. Pitch conditions, very good. Good corporate facility or basic corporate facilities, below average training facilities, basic youth facilities, a youth level of four, fairly basic academy coaching and basic youth recruitment as well. Senior squad then, Jack Giddens is the uh, is a goalkeeper wanted by someone, 31 years old, looks like he's got a bit of experience, a couple of players with bids on, under 18s, only a few youngsters, so a pretty small squad, especially if these two players make their exit as well. It's going to be uh, quite the restricted 
number of players for the first season. I think that's going to be the toughest, right? Is the first season staying up to make sure you get new youth recruits in. So I think that's the key. But that is everyone from the newly promoted teams in the Vanarama National League North. So we've got Geisley, FC United, Hitchin Town, Tamworth and Bishops Stortford. On to the Southern League now. So the first team from the Southern League where there's only three newly promoted teams is Billa Ricky Town. Probably quite famous for a number of different reasons to a number of you in the comment section or watching this video. In terms of facilities, Billa Ricky Town, uh, they got their stadium rebuilt in 2017. Uh, pitch conditions good. They have basic corporate facilities, adequate training facilities, below average youth facilities, but do have a youth level of four. Uh, they have fairly basic academy coaching and basic youth recruitment as well. Their senior squad isn't looking the healthiest. It is looking pretty short on players. The under-21s does have four players that we could use. Chris Dickinson is retiring. Uh, and the under-18s has nobody in it either. So that is Billericay Town. If they're your choice to go and play in the southern side of the National League, let me know down below. Dorchester Town are next as an, an option and um, they've got a big stadium 5,229 capacity built in 1990 it's in a good condition the pitch condition is perfect corporate facilities are fairly basic average training facilities basic youth facilities youth level four so matching that of Billericay uh, fairly basic academy coaching and fairly basic youth recruitment with uh, all the teams training and playing at Avenue Stadium which is uh, good for them the senior your squad again looks pretty healthy in terms of numbers to start with uh tom cole looks like he'll be leaving to taunton again everyone just bidding from taunton no under 21s but two youngsters in the under 18s billy simpson and amin mohammed uh, mahamud mahamud i think that would be um so yes dorchester town and then last but not least the metropolitan police team has been promoted to the Vanarama National League South, something I don't think I was expecting, you were expecting, or they were expecting, but they are up there in terms of getting promoted to the Vanarama National League South. In terms of facilities then, a 3,100 capacity stadium. Um, it is They own their own stadium, which is good. Surface is grass. The pitch condition is perfect. Corporate facilities are basic. Poor training facilities, poor youth facilities, zero youth level basic academy coaching and limited youth recruitment so they look like the hardest starting team to start is it going to be too tough they have a decent squad but a lot of gray players in here straight from the off and charlie wickham is uh, is not taunton it's dergvi and balamashi rangers are looking to bring in charlie wickham under 21s two players there guy norton and jack dillingham uh, both pretty young as well and the under 18s has nobody so this would be a tough squad 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 players there and these two so 15 players in the senior squad so we can use the grade out players but we can't sign them so they would be bench fodder i think if metropolitan police was the option but they are your options for teams then so just a quick review of them the metropolitan police who are so far off the level of everyone else they're ranked at 500 to 1 to win the league uh, Dorchester Town and Billericay Town in the Vanarama National League South in the National League North it is uh, Bishop Stortford, Tamworth, Hitchin Town, FC United of Manchester or Geisley so let me know down below which of those teams would you prefer me to start with the Youth Academy Challenge with it's going to be difficult with all of them I honestly think the Metropolitan Police will be too hard given their slight lack of numbers in their squad and we're not allowed to sign anyone and the Youth Academy has already come through for this season because we're just about to go into the next season. So I am assuming that all Youth Academy and recruits have come through the system now. So let me know what you think. We'll add a manager in in the next episode and take over one of those clubs and see in a bit more depth what we're working with but it is a short video today just to go through what's happening in this save and uh yes we've and also we've loaded all players so where i said before it was around sixty thousand players where i've reset this uh from the slight intro i did before it's now ninety six thousand players that are in this uh in this save so quite a big database makes it tougher as you go up the leagues a lot more options for people to sign but very excited to get this going it's going to be difficult it's going to be a long long haul and staying up in that first season is absolutely crucial. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below which club you think we should start with. And uh, we'll go from there. See you in the next one very soon. Cheers.